Hi there. We're going to look at the lawsuit between Gabby Petito's parents and Brian Laundrie's parents. The Petitos just sued the Laundries, and I have the actual lawsuit. We're going to go through it. I'll give you my analysis. Why are they suing Brian's parents? Hi there. I'm Michelle Hagan. I'm a legal analyst and a former prosecutor. You may recognize me. I provided a lot of legal analysis on the Elizabeth Holmes case. And by the way, I'll be doing an update on day three of Sonny Balwani's case. That should be the next video, so stay tuned for that. So I created this channel because a lot of you reached out and wanted more legal analysis, more in depth. So we're going to look at that lawsuit. We're going to see, does, do, the laun do the petitos have a case against the laundries? And, and what is this lawsuit about? Okay, so in case you popped onto this channel, um, very, very tragic situation. Gabby Petito was on a cross-country trip with her boyfriend, Brian Laundrie. Gabby was, uh, I think, 22 years old when she was found killed, murdered, uh, allegedly, by Brian Laundrie. I think uh, he did admit it. I think uh, he was also found dead. He actually uh, killed himself. Reported That's what's been reported. So anyway, um, we're going to look at this lawsuit and we're going to figure out what it's about. Okay. So I'm going to share it with you and please do leave a comment. Please share, like, and do subscribe. Okay. So let's look at this lawsuit. Now this is me, a lawyer looking at it and how I would be looking at this lawsuit. Okay. So it was filed yesterday on March 10th. It was filed in Sarasota County, Florida. Joseph Petito versus Nicole Schmidt. Those two are Gabby's parents. They're the plaintiffs. They're the ones bringing this cause of action, bringing this lawsuit against Christopher and Roberta Laundry, which are Brian's parents. All right, so let's try to figure out what this lawsuit is about. So um, I'm just going to quickly go through this. It's a complaint against the defendants, Christopher and Roberta Laundry. This is an action for damages. They're not suing for wrongful death. They're suing for damages. They're not suing for murder or homicide because that would be a criminal case. This is a civil case, a civil action, and civil actions are about money, about damages. So they are suing an action for damages that exceed 30000 now, some of you might say, what? They're only seeking 30,000? No, that's not what that means. What that means is the damages exceed 30,000. So I assume in the state of Florida, you have to be suing someone for over 30,000. So in California, I believe it's 25,000. The lawsuits have to be greater than that to allege them. Um, I may be goofed about this. It's Friday, but anyway, we're just gonna keep going. Okay, the venue is in Sarasota, Florida. The court, they have to allege all jurisdictional uh, basis here, so the in proper venue. So it's Sarasota. The court has jurisdiction, right? The plaintiff is Joseph Petito. He's a resident of Florida, right? You want to be a resident of the state in which you're suing. Nicole is a resident of Blue Point, New York. She's um, the plaintiff, the mother of Gabby. The defendants are Chris and Roberta Laundry, who live in Florida. So again, Joseph is filing a Florida resident against two other Florida residents. Christopher and Roberta Laundry are Brian's parents. Brian, and here's the, some of the facts. Brian Laundry and Gabrielle Petito became engaged to Mary on or about July 2nd, 2020. On July 2nd, 2021, Brian and Gabby left New York in a van owned by Gabby. You can go ahead and read this. Prior to the trip, um, both parents said a parents had a cordial relationship. Gabby had hopes of, and I hope it's okay to refer to her as Gabby, but Gabrielle had hopes of uh, becoming a travel influencer or van lifer. During the course of the uh, trip, Gabby called her parents, both her mother and her father and her siblings almost daily. The last communication that her, she had with her father was on August 21st. The last communication she had with her mother was August 27th, okay? Her body, I think, was found in September-ish. We'll get to that. So I highlighted areas that I'm looking at. It is believed that on August 27th, 
So the parents believe that on August 27th that Brian murdered Gabby. Cause of death was blunt force injuries to the head and neck area by manual strangulation. Gabby was 22 at the time of her death. This is such a tragedy, such a tragedy. After Brian Laundrie murdered, Brian sent text messages back and forth on his cell phone and Gabby's cell phone in an effort to hide the fact that she was deceased. Now, again, these are allegations that the parents, Gabby's parents are making. Doesn't mean that they're true. They're allegations, all right? On August 27th, it is believed that Brian sent a text to Nicole, to Gabby's mom, referring to her grandfather as Stan. Gabby never referred to her grandfather by that name. It was one of those red flags. Okay, now here's another area that I think is important. It is believed and therefore averred that on, on or about August 28th, Brian advised his parents, advised his parents, Brian on August 28th, the day after, right? Is that right? Let me double check here. Yeah, 27th is when they believe she was murdered. So on the 28th, the Petitos are alleging that on August 28th, Brian advised his parents that he had murdered Gabby. Now, I don't know what, how they know that. That's what we're going to have to stay tuned for. How do they know that? On the same day, Christopher, so Brian's parents, spoke with attorney Steve Bertolino and sent him a retainer on September 2nd. So I think what they're implying there is why did they hire, why did the laundries get an attorney? What is that about? And then on August 30th, so this is now f uh, three days after Gabby was murdered, Brian sent a text to, uh, uh, to, on Gabby's cell phone to Gabby's mom stating that there was no service in Yosemite Park in an effort to deceive Nicole Smith into believing that Gabby was still alive. Again, this is what the Petitos allege. On September 1st, Brian returned home to his parents. So what is that? Three, four days, four days later, four or five days later, he's back in Florida. He's returned home driving Gabby's van. At that point, there was no contact between the Petito, between either sets, of, between the Petitos on the one hand and Christopher and Roberta Laundry on the other. On August 27th until 9, September 19th, Gabby was found dead September 19th in Wyoming. Her remains were found at the Spread Creek Dispersed Camping Area in Wyoming. Plaintiffs were extremely distraught and were attempting to locate Gabby. This is, it's very sad, okay? Very, very sad circumstances. While Gabby's parents were, were suffering, the Laundry family went on a vacation to DeSoto Park on September 6th through 7th. They went on a vacation. I think Brian was with them at the time. I think that's what his sister has reportedly told the press. Uh, okay, in an effort to avoid any contact with Nicole, with Gabby's mom, on or about September 10th, so after their vacation, on September 10th, Brian's mother blocked Gabby's mom so that she wouldn't be receiving any calls or text, and she blocked Gabby's mom on Facebook. See, the Petitos are reaching out, trying to find out where is Gabby. On September 14th, with full knowledge that Gabby had been murdered by their son, this is what they allege, Christopher Landry, and Roberta Landry, through their lawyer, issued the following statement. Now, this is an interesting statement. It is our understanding that a search has been organized for Miss Petito in or near Grand Teton, Teton National Park in Wyoming. On behalf of the Laundry family, it is our hope that the search for Miss Petito is successful and that Miss Petito is reunited, reunited with her family. Okay, what's interesting about that statement that the laundries issued through their lawyer is that if the Petitos are alleging in this lawsuit that they knew um, that Brian, in, on August 28th, that Brian had told them that he had murdered Gabby, then why are they sending out this statement, right? And they're sending out this statement. They hope the search is successful. Well, if they knew, 
Why are they saying this? So let's continue. On September 16th, the attorney representing the Petitos issued a letter to the Laundries as follows. So I'm just going to read a few of these lines. You can go ahead and read it. We are writing this letter to ask for your help. They're reaching out. They want to find their beautiful daughter. We understand you're going through a difficult time and your instinct is to protect your son is strong, right? They're parents, right? We want to protect our children, okay? So we ask that you put yourselves in our shoes. So they're trying to get the, the laundries to respond to them. Where is Gabby? Let us know what you know. Please help us find our daughter. That's basically what they're saying. We believe you know the location of where Brian left Gabby. So this letter was sent on September 16th. They, be, they believe they know the location. The Petitos believe that the Laundries know where Brian left Gabby, and they're asking, we beg you to tell us. <sighs> wow. And then they say, please tell us where Gabby is located. Tell us if we're even looking in the right place. I mean, these are parents looking for their daughter. They're asking for their help. All we want is Gabby to come home. Please help us make that happen. Despite the fact that Gabby's parents implored Brian's parents to tell them if their daughter was alive or if she was not, where her remains were located, the laundries refused to respond to either Gabby's parents or to law enforcement. This is what they allege. All of this is allegations, right? Christopher, the laundries instructed, the laundries instructed that all contacts be made through their attorney. And he issued a no comment when asked about where is Gabby Petito. Now again, these are all facts that they allege, information that the Petitos allege to support their claim for damages, okay? While the uh, Gabby's parents were desperately searching for information concerning their daughter, the laundries were keeping the whereabouts of Brian secret. You know, many people saw this on the news day after day. Where's Gabby? Where's Brian? And the search for Brian for many, many days. And they believed, the Petitos believed, that the laundries were making arrangements for him to leave the country. Now, again, what is that based on? What's the information that they have that, the, first of all, that the laundries knew that Brian killed Gabby? And what's, how do they know that the laundries were making arrangements for him to leave the country? Now, they're going to have to prove that, right? They have to prove these allegations. So, paragraph 30. The Laundries knew of the mental suffering, and this is where it's important, because what is this a damages? This is a lawsuit for damages. Why? It's, it's a lawsuit for pain and suffering. It's a lawsuit for pain and suffering that the Petitos have endured because they're alleging the Laundries knew this information, withheld it, and because of that, the Petitos suffered mental suffering and anguish and that they knew they could alleviate at least in part that the petit that the laundries could alleviate the petito suffering in part such mental suffering and anguish by disclosing what they knew about the well-being and the location of the remains of gabby yet they the laundries repeatedly refused to do so in doing so the laundries acted with malice, malice, or great indifference to the rights of the Petitos, the uh, Gabby's parents, the Petitos and the Smiths. So the Petitos are alleging that because the laundries withheld this information, it caused them great mental suffering and anguish, anguish and that the laundries acted with malice. That's what they're alleging. And they're also saying, paragraph 31, the laundries ex exhibited extreme and outrageous conduct, which constitutes behavior under the circumstances, sorry, it's Friday, circumstances which goes beyond all possible bounds of decency and is regarding as shocking, atrocious, and utterly intolerable in a civilized community. I mean, here are parents reaching out, Where are my, where's my daughter? 
Last we knew, she was with your son. He's back, but where is she? You know, they, and for parent, other parents, Brian's parents, not to uh, give them any information that they may or may not have known, to not be cooperating with law, enforce, uh, law enforcement, to not be talking to Gabby's parents. Um, that's what they're alleging, and that caused, according to the Petitos, uh, it was extreme and outrageous conduct on behalf of the laundries. Paragraph 32, now as a direct and proximate result, so this is causation, as a direct and proximate result of the willfulness and maliciousness of the laundries, Gabby's parents have been caused to suffer pain, suffering, mental anguish, inconvenience, loss of capacity for enjoyment of life experienced in the past and to be experienced in the future. That's what this case is about. That's what their lawsuit's about. It's about suffering pain, suffering mental anguish, inconvenience, loss of capacity, and enjoyment of life because the information wasn't given to them. It's what they're alleging. Uh, and they want damages. They want to be compensated for the pain and suffering, for the, the actions that they allege that the laundries knew and withheld the information. So they'd say the plaintiffs respectfully request the court to enter a judgment in favor against the defendants. The defendants would be the laundries and award them, awarding the Petitos, uh, I'm sorry, I refer to the Petitos and the Smiths, Petito, Gabby's parents award them just compensation for the damages they have suffered together with costs and other relief as this honorable court deems just and appropriate. It's a great tragedy, great tragedy. So the Petitos are suing the laundries for damages. They want to be compensated for the pain and suffering, the anguish, the loss of enjoyment now and in the future to a tune exceeding $30,000. Whatever that amount is will be proved. This is a civil lawsuit. It'll be in front of a jury. Um, not an easy case, right? Because what... The laundry's attorney is already saying in the press reportedly their, their defense is going to be, one of their defenses will be, that the laundry's didn't have to talk. They didn't have to talk. They had a right, right to remain silent. That may be true, right? If Let's say they knew something, right? Just let's say you're accused of doing a crime. You have the right to remain silent. Not that they were accused of doing a crime, but the question is, do they have a right to remain silent? Did they have to cooperate? And according to their attorney, they don't. So we're going to see if this lawsuit's going to prevail, if they're going to succeed. But, you know, it's a tragedy for both sets of parents. They both lost their kids. It's horrible. This is a horrible circumstance. And in a civil case, you know, it's in front of a jury and it's, um, they have to prove this by a preponderance of evidence. And that's basically, if you look at the football field, right, it's more than 50, 50 yard line. Okay. And, um, it's not the higher standard of beyond reasonable doubt. It's a lesser standard, but you know, what information do they have that they knew? that the Petitos knew that the laundries knew that Brian called them and told them. What information do they have? Do they have text? Do they have somebody else? Is there another witness? We don't know that yet, but it's not in their complaint. So we will see. Okay. And I'm sure that the laundries will challenge and try to get this lawsuit dismissed. So we'll see. So stay tuned. So um, please leave a comment. What do you think? What do you think about this lawsuit? I mean, it's terrible. So if you have any questions, please leave your questions in your comments. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Do subscribe. Thanks again for watching. And prayers to both sets of families, really. This is a very difficult time.